Right, so today I'm going to be taking a look at some Hope Tech 4 V4 brakes. As you can see, I've got a few things in front of me. So I'm just going to quickly go over them and then go into more detail. So first of all, you've got the brakes themselves. I've got some disc rotors. I've got a Hope bleed kit. I've got some mounts and adapters. And then I've got some 3D printed tools for the aid of setting up these brakes and for maintaining them. Starting with the brakes themselves, they just come in these black boxes. And I'll just move one to the side and we'll just open the left hand side first. So on the box, it's just got the type of brake, the color you've got it in. Obviously this is the left hand. They're side specific, so you obviously need to get a pair. I'll just open this box up. You can see here it has a little note about any residual brake fluid that may be on the master cylinder and it's quite normal. Got a little bit of paperwork just explaining how to set the brakes up. Pretty straightforward. You got a Hope sticker. Then we'll get the brake out. So first off you got a little bag of accessories. So this is bolts, olives, and a barb for when you want to shorten the hose. The good thing about these brakes, it comes with three sets of brake pads. So you've got a green set, which is the racing pad, which is actually fitted into the caliper. Then you've got a set of e-bike pads and you've got a set of organic pads. They also do a gold pad, which is their sintered pad, but obviously that doesn't come with it. These are all made by Galfa now. I've used the purple e-bike ones before. I've been really good with these. I've not tried the other ones, but they all have various different uh, pros and cons depending on what type of conditions you're going to be riding in. So here's the brake itself. Now, what they actually do is they refer to the caliper and the lever as two different things. So the Tech 4 is the actual lever and the V4 is the caliper. So obviously if you've got an E4, you would just have a Tech 4 lever and then an E4 caliper. So main difference is the size of the pistons that are in it. So the main benefit of this brake over the previous version, the Tech 3, is that they've obviously changed the lever size and they've adjusted the way that the actual fluid is moved. So it actually increases it by about 30%. The Tech 3s tended to be slightly underpowered. So hopefully the 30% is actually true on these when I get them on. And then at the front here, you've got Hope's traditional dials, so you've got the bite point control and then you've got the reach adjustment. And they're nice and easy to operate. They can get a little stiff over time, so you might need to have a glove to use them in the future, but normally once you've set them, you don't really need to adjust them too much. I say it's a nice long lever on this. Some people were complaining it was too long, but I think it's actually fairly decent size. And one thing they've changed on this, it's now hinged on the clamp on the Tech 3. It used to be a two-piece, similar to how a stem is, so you'd need two bolts to attach it. I much prefer this design. You can just wrap it around and then attach it to the bar. These levers also allow you to integrate shifters and dropper levers. So, for example, I'm going to be running this Hope dropper lever. That uses a SRAM mount, so you're going to have to get an adapter. They do various different ones. Obviously, I've got a left-hand one. They are interchangeable, so you can run them on either side, depending on where you want the reach to be. It's really straightforward. I just also wanted to say, they don't currently have a way to attach the new pods from the SRAM transmission system. So you're going to have to use the bar mount system that comes with it. But I know they actually are working on one, so hopefully they can get that integrated, just to tidy that up, because these are a little bit of a pain to configure. And then the hose, they do this in two different versions. You've got the black hose, which I've got here, or they do a braided version. I do prefer the look of the braided version, but they're actually more of a pain to deal with on the frame, just due to the extra thickness. Fitting them through internal can be a bit of a pain. So I've just gone for the black version. Moving on to the caliper. So the main difference between this and the, say the E4, which is a slightly less powerful brake, is that the caliper uses two different piston sizes. So on the E4, it uses two 16 millimeter, which is a small version on here. And on the V4, it uses two 16 millimeters at the back, and then it uses two larger 18 millimeter pistons at the front. 
The thing that they've changed with these pistons, in the past they used to be a phenolic piston, so that's a type of resin that is really good at dissipating heat. The problem with that is that they can be a little brittle, so they were just the actual full piston and over time they could get chipped and the movement of them could become a little bit problematic. So what they've done now is they've now surrounded the phenolic resin with a stainless steel outer. So you retain the heat dissipation properties of the phenolic resin, but you now gain the consistent smoothness of the stainless steel. Here's both the right and the left together, just for comparison. So they're side specific, so they're like the Shimano where you have to get them for each side. You can't flip them like the SRAM ones. They're available in all of Hope's standard colors. You can also get some extras aftermarket, so you can just change the pistons out, or you can change the dials, or the lever, or the top cap. You can really customize them however you want them. Moving on to the bleed kit. So this isn't strictly necessary, but I do think it makes the job of setting these brakes up much easier. One thing that doesn't come with this kit that I'd recommend getting hold of is some Hunter's silicon lubrication. This is used for lubricating the pistons. You don't need it specifically when you're first setting the brake up, but over time this really helps when the pistons can become a little bit sticky over time due to brake dust and just general dirt. So we'll just open this up. It's a really straightforward kit, so you've got a little bit of plastic tubing. You've got some Hope branded brake fluid. This is dot 5.1. You've got the little cup, a little easy bleed cup. Let's say you've got a little guide here, some paperwork. And I'll leave a link in the description to Hope's video showing you how to bleed these. It's really straightforward. Let's get these out. So here you have a top cap cover for attaching the little bleed cup. This has a little rubber gasket. And then obviously you've got some bolts to attach it. So what you do is just get your lever, undo these, and then attach this onto the top. And then once this is in place, you would take your cup. So you just screw this in place. Then you would have that at the top. You have your little plunger, it has some O-rings on. It's a decent size as well, not a fiddly little straw like the Shimano one. Nice and solid. You obviously fill that up. And then on the caliper side, so you've got the bleed port here. You would just remove the rubber cover and then this piece just clips on and then you would attach the hose over the top of that and obviously put it into a tub to drain it out. Again I'll leave a link in the description to the bleed procedure for this. I just wanted to quickly show you what comes in the Easy Bleed kit. Moving on to the rotors. Now obviously depending on what your frame and fork is, you're going to need some version of adapter. Hope obviously sell their own, you can use other ones. I'll leave a link in the description to the chart explaining which one you'll need depending on what size rotor you have. Moving on to the discs themselves, so I've got two different sizes, I've got a 203 and a 220. I'll just get these out. I've gone for the standard single piece rotor. This is a 2.3mm thick rotor. They also do a vented rotor, which is a 3.3mm one, but this would not fit on my frame, so I had to go for 2.3. They also do the floating rotor, which is available in both center lock and 6 bolt. Unfortunately, this is only a 1.8mm thick rotor. Ideally, I wish they'd done maybe a 2mm thick rotor, because I just prefer the much more rigid disc, hence why I've gone for the single piece. But if you're looking for color, on your rotor and you don't want to put up with the weight of the vented, they also do the floating version. Just for comparison, here's a 1.8mm thick rotor and then here is a 2mm rotor. It's hard to tell on video but it's a really heavy duty feeling rotor and it should stand up to quite a bit of abuse. Obviously it comes with some rotor bolts. Just a size comparison on these rotors, so here's the 220 and the 203. Let me see, pop them over. Next I'm just going to talk about the 3D printed tools that I've got. I got these from a company called R3 Pro, many others do similar ones, but 
I just got them all together from this company. So first of all, we're going to start with the bleed block. So it also acts as a pad spreader as well. It's really straightforward. So obviously you've got your caliper when you're going to be bleeding it. Obviously you've got no brakes in. It's got a small hole at the top. You just line that up and then pop the pin in. Obviously that will then hold it in place while you're bleeding it. I feel like uh, Hope should really put one of uh, a similar sort of thing in with the Easy Bleed Kit. Next we'll move on to the rotor alignment tool or caliper alignment tool. And what this is, as you see it's got a cut in the bottom. Uh, let's imagine this caliper's on the bike. And you're wanting to line up your rotor. Now you want to get the rotor centralized. It can be a little bit tricky, particularly on the rear, where you tend not to get good clearance on it and it's hard to get them centralized and this tool literally just pops in over the top and allows you to get it central then you can just tighten the bolts up. They do this in a few different versions so they've got the 1.8, the 2.3 and then the 3.3. This can also be used as a bleed block as well because they've cut a hole in it so you can also just pop that in as well. Next we're going to take a look at the piston release tool. So this obviously won't be for the initial setup of the brake, but it's handy when you've had the brake for a while and you need to clean the pistons. It can be a bugger to get out. You have to use a tire lever normally. But this tool, you just pop it in and then obviously squeeze the lever. That allows one piston at a time to come out. You can clean the piston up, exercise it, and then put a little bit of silicon lube on it. It just enables you to be able to get all the pistons to move nice and smoothly and you're going to get a nice even pad wear going forward. It's a handy tool this. I've used this on a couple of other different brands of brakes and it's really helped. You know, the SRAM ones, for example, tend to get really sticky and uh, I've used a similar tool to this. You can get them for various different brakes. Excellent tool. Quick check of the weight on this. So obviously this is going to depend on whether you've cut the hose and if you've got any adapters or accessories fitted to it. But just to give you a general idea, this is the brake with the pads in. Quick check of the discs. This is the 203. And this is the 220. That was a quick look at some Hope Tech 4 V4 brakes. Now I'm going to be doing some upcoming videos where I go over the installation of these brakes and a review of the performance of them. So if you're interested in that, please keep an eye on the channel. But if you've got this far into the video, I do appreciate it. And if you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the box below. And thanks for watching.